So it's almost three o'clock. It's time to open our lab doors for you and to lift the curtain showing you some of the results from our 5G air interface. It's an air interface for ultra-reliable, almost low latency robot communication. We have done this demonstration with uh, teams, two teams, one from uh, Festo uh, Software Engineering and two teams from Huawei Technologies for Automation and, uh, and uh, 5G. What I will do is, before opening the lab for you, give some quick facts on Huawei Technologies and Industry for Zero background so that you understand what we are talking about. You might know already, have, have seen the uh, demonstrators from Huawei in hall number eight, so I can be a little bit short on the factory presentation there. But uh, for Industry for Zero, I need to show you some basics first. And after that, I show you the potential and challenge of uh, 5G uh, air interfaces for robot control, giving an outlook after that, I'll close with this. Coming to Huawei Technologies, um, having, uh, was founded in 1987 with very low budget and having grown to 75 billion US dollar enterprise. Uh, it's a global ICT company um, and all the products and solutions have been deployed in more than 140 companies, uh, countries with a global footprint. So um, we have 140 we have 140, uh, uh, more, more than 140 countries, um, our solutions available, 16 R&D centers. I just see this is not the uh, current presentation, but uh, it's very close to that. Having 28 uh, innovation centers and 45 training centers. Is this the current presentation there? It's not the, it's not the actual one. Does it have the, uh, okay. Upload the uh, current presentation with our demo results we have achieved. Ah, okay, then I resume with that. <coughs> so our solutions are uh, deployed in more than 140 countries. We have 16 R&D centers, uh, 160,000 employees worldwide, and 80,000 working R&D. Uh, an overview on our business areas we have here, the carrier business group all about fixed network, wireless networks, machine-to-machine -machine connections, and uh, the enterprise business group all about data center infrastructure, big data analytics, and cloud services. Coming to the carrier, to the smart devices business group, all about smartphones, home devices, mobile broadband, and the P10 you can see over here as our flagship, uh, you might know from the Mobile World Congress. We have reached a very high growth rate of 75 uh, billion US dollar, mainly due to our strategic focus in all the three business areas. For enterprise, it is focusing on the uh, digital transformation and for for consumer business, it's reaching the breakthrough with our P10, the flagship and carrier business, by reaching a stronger position in our net with our network products. So far, so good about uh, Huawei Technologies. Coming now to some industry for zero background. I will skip the first and the second evolution. You know all of that. Coming directly to uh, industry 3.0, which might have started at 1969 with introducing the first PLC, which is a little bit provocative to say, still state of the art in some shop floor environments. And uh, what I will do in my presentation is, I show, show you how to get rid of this cable here, and how to shift how to get rid of this cable and the control cabinet, and how to shift this into the cloud. Um, this is what Industry for Zero can do for you, uh, together with uh, 5G. 
Industry 4.0 is transforming the traditional automation pyramid into a network of smart products, uh, uh, smart Industry 4.0 components on the right side, by amending the automation pyramid on the pr smart product level on the uh, lower side and the connected world over here. The uh, interconnected Industry 4.0 uh, components, they allow networking over standardized interfaces. We have heard from Alexander Fay before and the TE colleague. And we see some on the back wall of the Industry 4.0 booth over there on the open ad asset admi administration shell. Autonomous negotiation of resources is part of it. The product design is, um, or the, the production design is incorporated into the product design and smart logistics is also possible by uh, the application scenarios we have seen before. Alexander Fay has introduced 11 of them. So the product is part of the whole life cycle. Um, looking at the communication layer structure itself, which has been proposed by Workgroup 1 of the Industry 4.0 platform, shows how the uh, Industry 4.0 components would interact. What we see in the RAMI model here is the hierarchy from product to the connected world. We can see in that, in that uh, graph down here for the, uh, for the communication layer structure as well, and the um, necessary latency budget on the side, sorry, latency budget here. Um, all about um, um, closed loop control is this one, this very low latency budget is about one millisecond. Here it's one to 100 milliseconds in the field of uh, agents, AGVs traveling around on the shop floor level and end-to-end -end communications uh, is uh, across cross-plant solutions we would, uh, we would see over here with no latency requirements, or about 100 milliseconds. Um, wireless solutions cannot help us here because they do not lead, uh, they, they, do not, they don't have the, uh, uh, the requirements on security and uh, robustness. And the data volume here on that field is increasing a little bit due to the sensors we have, uh, like uh, image processing and um, environment screening. On the shop floor level, industry f uh, 5G would help us to reduce the cable costs because uh, uh, AGVs would communicate with the cloud on this side to get data analyzed and so that the, uh, that the robot could be controlled back from the cloud. Cross-plant wireless networks uh, would not help us here, but 5G, due to uh, time-sensitive networks and network function virtualization. Coming now to the test bed we have established in Munich, together with Sesto, Coca, ABB, and Bosch. Uh, here's a small video that shows our demonstrator. Now we enter the lab. We see um, uh, Robot Tino. Uh, okay, later on, this is the access point for 5G, the controller in the cloud, connected with gigabit Ethernet, and the robot that is balancing a ball where the ball coordinates are sent to the cloud, and from the cloud we get the control actions for the, uh, for the six axes for the robot. Disturbance is superimposed by accelerating and breaking the robot, and we can see that um, the, the ball always gets centered. This is possible by the 5G solution we have, but uh, if we superimpose the latency of LTE, like 20 milliseconds, the ball would fall off. So it's a very nice use case we choose just to analyze the, uh, the latency budget we have in use. What did we want to prove with our application here? Two things. First of all, proof of robot as a service uh, by 5G technology and proof of the latency wireless communication for real time, having control loop in the cloud. And um, the control functions run on an external uh, cloud controller connected via 5G. All six degrees are used to balance the ball. And uh, this is, of course, a challenge for the control algorithm. 
and the challenge for the latency budget. We see the 5G baseband here to upload the ball position to uh, the cloud. 5G new base station radio here connected to the industrial cloud where the trajectory plan is calculated to, go to give back the updated motor positions to the, uh, to the robot itself. So this is a real-time control loop you see with low latency and high reliability. A look on the system setup we have. Uh, it's a 5G U and B radio connected to the, uh, to the robot with 2.6 gigahertz. We are using a test license with a bandwidth of 20 megahertz. In future, it will be 40 to 100 megahertz. The target was to see if 5G would allow closed loop uh, control from the cloud with very low latency, one millisecond uses, usage of higher frequency bands would be possible in future when we have candidates of 3.5 gigahertz or 30 gigahertz. High bandwidth to be reached with 10 gigabit per second and low energy at the moment for this robot setup over here, six volts and 20 uh, ampere hours. The example is not balancing the ball, it is synchronizing different um, robots together, maybe cooperating robots or cooperating ro robots together with drones. Uh, the connection diagram here shows its gig gigabit Ethernet connection on the robot side, as well as on the, uh, on the cloud side. It's connected to the uh, 5G radio. At the moment, we are using the ultra-reliable low latency control mode entry for very low latency, but we can also use the EMB uh, mode to, uh, to set up cameras with a high data rate of video volumes at 10 gigabit per second. Um, having the balance control algorithm running here in the cloud um, with the interface to the uh, radio, again with the gigabit Ethernet. Uh, the control loop uh, diagram shows how the uh, coordinates uh, from, from the touch screen are uploaded, sent to the balance controller. Inverse kinematics is taking lots of the budget, of the latency budget we have. It's about five to six milliseconds. Um, the updated uh, co corrections for the robot uh, positions are sent to the access controller where the robot has uh, some disturbance add-on by the game controller. We have three more degrees of freedoms are used. And then uh, the air interface is on this side, this side. Overall, this system is not yet optimized. It's the very first shot, giving a physical latency of about six milliseconds. Uh, let's have a look at our test results from the packages. We see um, that the packages are 2,000 bytes, uh, be very big and latency is 5 milliseconds reached at a maximum data rate of 3.8 megabit per second. Conclusion is that those requirements cannot be met with LTE because LTE has more than 10 uh, milliseconds latency and we have five to balance the ball. If we add higher latency, the ball falls off. So this can only be reached by uh, 5G. Have a look at um, our, um, the packet sizes and packet counts. Different packet sizes reach up to 2,500 bytes, but the peak is at 600, uh, at, uh, at uh, here. It's 80 to this star has to, be, has to go over there. Peak is 40 to 160 bytes. And the 5G URLLC, as defined in the uh, REL 15, cannot support this and requires an update of the standard. Here we see uh, the packets per second. It's on average 600 to 700 packets which are exchanged per second. We see, uh, you might have seen this uh, cooperating robot on our booth or at the Mobile World Congress uh, showing the 5G air interface. Can you, can you set up the... It synchronizes its drum hits with wireless signals to stick to its programmed rhythm. 
It doesn't need cables and tethers for precise timing, unlike other industrial robots. Technology like this could decrease costly or dangerous delays on a factory floor. Huawei Technologies and KUKA showed off the robot at the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona. All right, so far, cooperating robots, as we have seen uh, in our booth over there in uh, hall number eight. Uh, the fog layer may close the gap between field and cloud layer and uh, would have the data processing, image analysis, shared data, control of collaborating robots, and uh, using also the human-robot collaboration, communication there, um, having mobile technologies Nearby, we can use the, uh, the apps that serve uh, gesture control and uh, voice control to control the, uh, the different equipment with, for example, for easy robot, robot programming. Some applications we uh, see at Audi with low reliability, 5 times 9, latency of 1 millisecond, 1 gigabit per second, uh, as displayed in the next video. Over here, we see the drone. Uh, seeing uh, the obstacle going around and uh, bringing an object to the warehouse or the next process step. So we think that uh, the next uh, step to, uh, for 5G air interfaces could be to uh, communicate, uh, having, have drones communicate with the robots or robots cooperating with each other. So there's the license-free bands over here in Europe and 433 megahertz, 863 megahertz, 2.4 gigahertz, and 5.7 gigahertz. But there's a challenge because these license-free bands um, get over congested with new applications, and interferences disturb the data transmission in this case. Data and network security, of course, is a topic, so there's a need for dynamic network slicing and slicing solutions offered by 5G and the lobby for Spectrum. Uh, the work plan were published by uh, the 3GPP meeting, Dubrovnik, March from 2017, shows uh, that we are currently in the 5G study phase where requirements are published, or let's say where the uh, manufacturing industry has to announce the requirements, whereas in the middle of 2017, the 5G new radio work items on uh, non-standalone would work on current existing infrastructure like 3G, 4G, and LTE. And uh, coming in the middle of 2018, uh, it's uh, standalone uh, solutions with new infrastructure running here. We have uh, created um, a 5G association for autom automotive industry, connected cars and um, got some experience, gained some experience in this field, and want to go on together with partners to build a 5G digital factory association to lobby for spectrum, you d define new requirements and use cases, and finding new business models. So thank you very much for your, for, for your uh, attention. I'm sorry that this was not the actual presentation, but uh, it was, let's say, the previous one. Okay, thank you very much. Thank mm -hmm. you.